Hello my darlings, it's Zui here, and today I'm delivering you a Toshinori Yagi story, or as he's more widely known, All Might. I hope you enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed writing it. But before we dive right into it, since this isn't the Bakuku story, it is even more important that you do the following. Like the video, comment something down below, and watch the video until the end. You can even dislike it if you want. This way you can ensure that I get a better standing in YouTube algorithm and that more people watch my stuff. And the more people watch my stuff, the happier I get. Also, if you know anyone that might enjoy my videos, or if you are in a Boku no Hero related Discord server, for example, it doesn't hurt posting my videos there. You could also just post them on Twitter with a couple of hashtags on it, and hope that the clickbait gets someone. I, if you, if you could do that for me, I would very greatly appreciate it. Because as soon as the video is uploaded, it is essentially out of my hand. So, yeah. Please, do so. Also, I appreciate any piece of uh, fan art that you might send my way. And I'm even okay if it is rule 34. So, just so you know. Okay, let's get right into the show. Things were bad. All Might, the symbol of peace, had retired. And suddenly every little piece of scum and villainy awakened. The only thing missing were riots. And if social media was any indication, if any policeman were to arrest someone with a mutation quirk, and that person would, for example, OD on whatever crap was currently being sold on the market, this entire powder keg of a city would erupt. Luckily, you had office duty. You couldn't fathom the stress your colleagues were in. A few years ago, you had joined the police force, mostly due to your quirk being useless and a borderline disability. You had been working overtime almost every day since All Might was gone. An insane amount of work piling up by the hour. And while many of your co-workers seemed to handle this new work environment quite well, you and a few others were going through hell. With a heavy sigh, you stamped the last work paper of the day before leaning back in your seat. It was actually 12 a.m. by now. You were on your fourth hour of overtime. This had to be illegal, right? You rubbed your eyes and stretched in your seat. All you needed to do now was put the papers away and then you could leave all this stress behind. The only relief of this madness was the fact that after today you officially been on vacation. With tired eyes you slowly delivered your filed work to the various workspaces, getting a few comments as to how you should take it more easy and how you are completely overworking yourself. It was somewhat nice. Like a comfy hug from family members before leaving on a train to somewhere. Now, with heavy lidded eyes, you walk through the neon doused streets of your home city. It was raining, not heavy enough to be uncomfortable, but still enough to be of note. You considered buying something to eat, but the only places open at this time of night weren't really your taste. So you did a pizza from yesterday it was. You were halfway home when you felt something was off. A weird feeling of being followed or watched. While walking you glanced towards any reflective surface. Why were you feeling like this now? 
It was as if your emotions and logical thinking were breaking out in an all-out war. As your anxiety slowly began to rise. Why were you thinking this? What triggered this now? Sure, there were people around you, but no one was looking at you. Right, right. Were you doing something you weren't aware of? Your heart began to drone out the sounds of the rain. Clutching your keys, you slowly began to increase your walking speed. And by the time you reached your home, you were in an all-out sprint. With shivering hands, you just barely managed to unlock the door and enter, before you slid down behind its cool metal. You caught an imposing apartment complex your home. Only the emergency lights were lit at this hour, but that was okay. Out of breath and close to crying, you sat there on the moist stone floor. If your normal thinking returning ever so slowly. You thought of possible reasons for this panic attack. Closing your eyes, you slid further down. Stress was the only thing coming to mind. This had happened before. Shouldn't that make you used to it by now? You closed your eyes. Your eyelids feeling like sandpaper. When feeling calm enough, you went back on your feet. Body feeling very sore. Slowly you trekked up the stairs of the complex. Despite you knowing you had a vacation now for roughly six months, it had still managed to be a surprise. So you didn't have anything planned. When you reached the door of your apartment, you sighed in relief. You had managed to not panic the entire walk up here. Your keys twisted and the door opened. With a nervous smile, you walked towards your kitchen. Only to be met with a shock similar to a heart attack. Your fridge was open, the door covering the upper body of a person. You took a quiet step back, glad that you weren't paralyzed by fear. Clonk. The intruder dropped something. A can. A can of beer. Wait, you didn't drink beer. Ah, oh, crap said the intruder before bending down to pick up the drink. Wait, that voice. No way. T Toshinori? You felt your stomach turn. The can dropped once again and the man quickly closed the fridge. The man in front of you. Toshinori Yagi, alias... All Might, the now retired symbol of peace. You never thought you'd see him again in person. Every blush was on his face. Uh, hey. He stuttered as he rubbed the back of his head in embarrassment. I was planning on waiting outside, but the drinks would have gotten warm, so I invited myself in. Why... Why are you here? You felt tears run down your face. And within two steps he was next to you. I'm sorry. I didn't realize. You and All Might were in a relationship a few years ago. It was short and secret. More romance and talking than hugs, kisses and sex. But when the media had gotten behind it and was about to publish your address... He quickly broke up with you to protect you. Safe to say, this left a lot of unsaid things in the room. None. Neither of you getting proper closure. 
and seeing him made all these pent up emotions that just a few minutes ago forced you to rush home. You broke. You began loudly sobbing as you wrapped your arms around him. You wanted to scold him for invading your home unannounced. You wanted to shout at him for leaving you. But your loud cry swallowed every attempt at forming words. Toshinori raised an eyebrow before awkwardly wrapping his bindly arms around your slender frame. I'm sorry. He whispered into your ear. I should have caught you, but I haven't really had much time to think. He wanted to let go of you, but your own arms embraced his skeletal form. I'm sorry, he repeated. With his right hand, he gently combed through your hair. It took you about ten minutes of seemingly endless sobbing before you could finally let go of him. He gave you a reassuring smile. You haven't gotten over me, huh? You nodded before adding, It was just that. The stress. The anxiety. They've put me on office duty because my hands are too shaky to properly use a gun. You paused before wailing. They took my gun! Gun! Toshinori! Oh, you always liked that thing. Your gun was a symbolic replacement for your useless quirk. It had made you feel safe, despite never having to actually shoot someone. I just wanna quit. Toshinori sighed. <sighs> I have a few things I want to discuss with you. Nothing bad, I promise. In shaky legs, you walked into your living room. Toshinori closed behind you. You sat down on your sofa while he took a chair to your opposite side. Uh, first, I want to apologize for never talking to you after the breakup. There was regret in his voice. I should have at least stayed in contact with you. He scratched his chin and thought. One of my many mistakes. I'm sorry. He paused. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to try to stop saying sorry so much to get the point across quicker. You nodded in response. Truth is, now that I'm retired, I would like to try being with you again. You felt your eyes widen and face heat up. You would be less in danger from the press. You sniffled. I mean, you would be in less danger from the press. You sniffled. Are you sure? You just don't... Want me to pity you? Because of what happened? He chuckled darkly. In truth, I was always looking for a way to get back to you. You know, my quirk can be inherited, so when I found the right candidate, I was just a matter of month. In truth, I always looked In truth, I was always looking for a way to get back to you. You know my quirk can be inherited. So when I found the right candidate, it was just a matter of months. He bit his lower lip. I mean, you gotta agree, as long as I was the symbol of peace, we would have, ironically, gotten no peace on our own. Sure, it worked for a few months, but... You shook your head. Toshi, you muttered quietly. I don't think I could handle another breakup. He ground his teeth. I wasn't planning on ever doing it again. Your lips quivered as more tears ran down your face. 
Were you planning all this? No. You looked up into his face. Do you understand how horrible these past weeks were? Toshi, the entire country is going insane. There was no contingency plan. The people idolized you so much. And now they're all demoralized. They have... This country has become weaker with you. I know. Nothing could have prepared Toshinori for this. It expected you to have moved on and now be taken by someone else. Expected you to cry and demand him to leave. What he didn't see coming was told what everyone else had been telling you up What he didn't see coming was being told what everyone else had been telling him up to this point, especially Aizawa. You were about to break out into tears again when he broke the silence. I never stopped thinking about you. Your heart felt like it had been squeezed hard by the hand of death. You both felt cold and hot at the same time. Toshi, I... Your brain felt like it was about to melt. I want to be honest, because... The stress... It's been a lot, and... I don't know what would be the right choice here. He gave you a hopeless smile. We are both hyper-emotional, dude. To the things that have happened. You swallowed a clump down your throat. But I want to try. I think. You shifted in your seat. Please. Hold me again, Toshinoriyaki. You made room for him to sit next to you. And slowly he approached. After carefully sitting down next to you, he once again embraced you. You could feel his warmth, hear his uneven heartbeat. I love you, he whispered softly. <laughs> 